want to bring in now Dr. Kenneth Remy. He's a critical care physician at UH Rainbow Babies and Children's Hospital in Cleveland. Dr. Remy, good to see you. So we just heard there that, you know, that more children are filling hospital beds than they have in the last two years. So why do you think this disease seems to be spreading so much right now? Well, thank you, Frederica, for having me today. You know, I think first and foremost, we're seeing a lot of children who weren't exposed to these viruses over the last two years because of good social distancing and staying home practices. And that immunity gap, if you will, is sort of catching up with us in that respect. Mm -hmm. And then we're, we're just seeing a huge uptick, you know, at an interesting time where we're just going to RSV season. We saw the first year out of the pandemic. We saw that in June where we don't see RSV, we saw an uptick. And so this is a continuation of that and certainly filling our hospital beds. Oh, so what are you seeing at your hospital? So we're seeing a predominance right now in our intensive care unit of RSV. What we're seeing is that, you know, certainly we've got a pandemic for well many years before the pandemic of, of shortages. And so we're filling our beds with beds that we can staff like most places in the United States. And, and RSV is accounting for at least 40% of at least the positive cases that we're seeing in the intensive care unit. Mm -hmm. So then what are some of the challenges uh, that your hospital and others are facing when you've got a surge like this, uh, which is atypical of this season, usually comes a little bit later, but what kind of accommodations are you having to make? So trying to keep children in emergency room or other spaces outside of the intensive care unit or inpatient beds is a commonplace now. You're seeing some institutions putting up tents to actually care for this excess load of patients that previously they were unable to take care of due to this capacity. You know, and I think the big fundamental question is, is when is influenza or some of the other viruses going to hit? And if they hit on top of this RSV, that certainly is going to be devastating to capacity. And it means that we'll likely have to continue to cancel surgeries and elective procedures as we try to face this sort of pandemic we're seeing with nursing shortages, respiratory therapists, etc. Are you concerned that this isn't even the peak, that it just might get worse? So, you know, I wish I could give you the direct answer, but the truth is we don't know. I mean, so things are acting differently than previously pre-pandemic. And so the fact that RSV came in June of last year and is now rearing its ugly head here in September means that we may have a prolonged uh, period of time for RSV, but we may have parainfluenza and human metanumavirus and influenza all on the heels of this. And, and that's what makes this complicating to at least predict. What do you recommend parents need to look out for, caregivers? I mean, look, my, my twins, they're now 10, but they got RSV when they were just one month old, and it was really serious. One of my kids was in ICU for 10 days, and he barely made it through. I didn't know what it was at the time, but if not for the keen, you know, watchful eye of a good friend who said, you need to take them to the ER, I wouldn't have known. So what do people look for? Now, it's a great question. First and foremost, I wanna put people at ease. So even though we see 2.1 million cases of outpatient cases of, of RSV for children under, under five years, and this accounts for about 60,000 children younger than five with hospitalizations annually, mm -hmm. we only see one to 300, thankfully, of deaths. So most well, far and away children will survive this. So as you point out, it's a disease of really newborns, those under the age of two. And so if your child is having respiratory distress or increased work of breathing, or is a premature child or has other comorbidities or problems, these are children that when they start to exhibit those symptoms, you wanna bring them to the emergency room as soon as possible. Furthermore, protect those that are above age 65. About 14,000 Americans that are over age 65 will die of RSV as well. And so we've gotta be cognizant to wash our surfaces and wash our hands more frequently in this season. Wow, and while you talk about the at-risk children who are usually under two, in that piece we saw a five-year-old, can it really um, you know, um, impact kids of all ages? Absolutely. So by age t two, before the pandemic, almost every child has been exposed to RSV that lives here in, in, in the United States. Mm -hmm. But now, certainly with, with the pandemic and the influence that's had on that immune gap that we've just talked about, certainly we can see this these symptoms now for first exposure to the virus uh, rearing its head for those that are three, four, five years of age um, now that are having actual symptoms that may not have been as, as sick previously. And then if you've got other conditions like asthma or other comorbidities, certainly any RSV at any point in your time frame as a child may have actually have deleterious effects that bring you to a hospital. All right. Again, everyone can make a difference. Uh, help. Just wash your hands. Real basic stuff. Uh, Dr. Kenneth Remy, good to see you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Frederica.